for many decades, Microsoft Excel was the primary tool for data accounting, finance, and analysis. It still remains the de facto standard on how organizations do data analytics today. This is why we put together this Excel Basics for Beginners tutorial. And we are planning to cover here Excel user interface, how to do data entry in Excel, how to format, sort, and filter data, and basic of Excel formulas. And the best of all is that we will do this overview in the latest version of Excel for the web, which is available for free on office.com platform. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka, and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant, helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in the community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. Excel for the web interface is very similar to traditional desktop interface, and you have a lot of options to customize it for your needs. There are multiple ways how you can create new Excel online document. The easiest way is to click on the Start New and then select Spreadsheet. Another way to do it would be click on Excel application, and this will launch new instance of Excel and you'll be able to create the new worksheet. Here you can select different templates. You can click more templates to see a lot of available choices. Templates allow you to start with pre-built design and functionality instead of building it from scratch in Office Online. For example, you can use template for simple invoice, Gantt project chart, make a list, schedule, personal inventory, uh, family budget, and there are a lot of other options. If you click Explore All Templates, it will show you all available options. But I'm going to go back and continue with the blank workbook. I'm going to click Back button in my browser and go back to the Start screen and use the first method. I'm going to click Start New and we'll create a new spreadsheet. As you can see, Excel Online looks very similar to traditional Excel application on the desktop. By default, it launches with simplified ribbon. To switch to traditional ribbon, you just need to click this toggle, and it switches to traditional ribbon. I am going to continue with traditional ribbon, because that's the ribbon I used to, but we will cover also a simplified ribbon as well, just so you will have an idea of what type of commands you can expect from simplified ribbon. Excel Online consists of multiple tabs. For example, most of the commands are located on the Home tab, and this is where you will spend probably 80% of your time. But there are a lot of other tabs like Insert, Formulas, Data, and you can switch between the tabs by clicking on the tab bar. Each icon in the ribbon represents specific command in Excel Online. And these commands are grouped into groups. So for example, there is a font group, alignment group, number group, tables, cells, and editing. In the bottom right corner, you see zooming functions. If you click plus button, you can zoom in. If you click minus button, then you will zoom out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see cells a little bit closer before we start typing. But last thing before we start typing, I wanted to show you in the bottom left corner, you can check the workbook statistics. If you click on the workbook statistics, you see information about the current worksheet. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills, tips, Tricks and techniques we share with you here on Online Training for Everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. Let's look at some fundamental Excel Online concepts. You have concept of columns. We have columns A, B, C, D, and you can select them by clicking on the header, and it goes uh, until the end of English alphabet, and then it starts A, 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 B, and it goes into infinity. Then you have concept of rows, and rows represented by uh, numbers. And on the intersection of each column and row, you have a cell. And uh, the cell ID is located right here in the name box. 
So for example, this is cell B4 because it's located on the intersection of column B and row 4. We also have a concept of range, and range is a group of cells. For example, we can select some cells, and the range would be from the starting cell in the upper left corner into the lower right corner cell. So in this particular case, the range identification would be B2 through C7. That would be our range. We also have a concept of workbook and worksheets. Workbook is Excel in line document. So book that is named right now is the name of the workbook. And we can rename it by clicking here and typing. I typed Excel in line tutorial. There's no need to click save button because Office Online and any application in office.com and Office Online saves data automatically onto OneDrive. So at every point of time, at any moment of time, your data is saved and protected. Now we covered the concept of workbook. There's a concept of worksheet and there are multiple worksheets in one workbook. By default, only one worksheet is created, which is called sheet one. You can click on it and rename it, or you can add more worksheets. If you click the plus button here, in the bottom left corner, it keeps adding more and more worksheets. I'm going to go back to worksheet one so we can start data entry. To start entering the data in Excel Online, you can just select the cell and start typing. For example, I would like to create a table and enter business expenses. I just need to start typing and I'll type expenses. To navigate between the columns, you can press tab and it will take you from column A to column B, and you can start typing. For example, I'll type January. If you would like to go back, you just need to press Shift tab. You can always use the mouse to put the cursor into the correct cell, but using the keyboard is much, much faster. And if you learn how to use keyboard, you will be much more productive in Excel Online. So we covered how to go from column to column, and this is by using tab and Shift tab. In order for us to go to a different row, you just hit Enter. And then it, it took us to the cell A2. And this is where I'm going to enter the type of expenses. In my case, I'm going to have lease is one of the expenses. I'm going to hit enter again. And I'm going to type utilities. And as you might have figured out by now, if I'd like to go down, I would need to type enter. But if I would like to go up, I would just need to hit uh, shift enter. I have manually typed in all my data, and this is how it looks. We have rows representing the types of expenses, and we have office supplies, lease, utilities, phone, computer, and internet, and then I have months from January to June, and each month on the intersection of months and expenses, we have a number which represents expenses for that particular month. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this, and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. Let's zoom in the data using zoom functions that we covered. So we can see it up close and we can see it full screen. And then we'll focus on the formatting of the table. There are multiple different things you can do to make this data look professional. For example, you can select the range of the data and you can add borders to the data. The most typical borders would be all borders, which will have borders for the data on all sides of the cell. You might also notice that the month and the dollar amounts are misaligned. Months data is aligned to the left versus dollar data is aligned to the right. To change this, you need to select all these columns from B through G. And then you, what you can do, you can change the alignment for all the selected data. For example, this is how centered alignment will look like. If you want to try alignment on the left, I don't think it looks professional. So I think centered alignment would be the best for this type of data. You might also consider highlighting the first row, which is the header row. To do that, we need to select the range between cells A1 and G1, and then we can add a background color, for example, some light color, which would look nice on the black and white printout. And you can also make the font here bold. Since Excel Online is designed as a tool for data analysis, you can quickly sort and filter the data. To do that, you need to select the first row, and then click Sort and Filter, and click filter. You see what happened, Excel just added the drop downs, and now you have a lot of sorting and filtering options. For example, if you would like to organize expenses and make expense types in alphabetical orders, all you need to do is to select the drop down box here and select sort ascending. 
and you see that it organized the expenses and put the types of expenses in alphabetical order from letter C to letter U. A lot of times you might consider showing the totals when you're looking at the data. For example, you would like to know how much money was spent in expenses in the months of January. To do that, you need to put a cursor into the cell B8 and then there is an auto sum formula that you can use. You just click on the auto sum and Excel auto guesses or provides auto suggestion and it automatically inserts the formula, which is the sum of all the values in the range B2 through B7. And you see this is how Excel represents the ranges. To refresh your memory, the range is the set of values which starts with the top cell, which in our case is B2, and goes from B2 to the cell B7. If you hit enter, it shows you the total for the months of January, which represents an amount of $2,180.08. Now you can do the same thing for each and every month. For example, for months of February, you can navigate to the cell C8 and repeat the steps of what I just did previously through AutoSum. Or you can replicate the formula for all the columns which represent the months. To do that, you just need to find this box at the bottom right corner of the cell B8, and then you just need to drag it, and Excel replicated the formula and recalculated the values for the months from January through June. All you need to do now is just to type total here in this column and you probably might want to choose the right alignment here so it is more aligned to the total numbers. In a similar way to calculating totals for the columns, you can also calculate totals for the rows. For example, you might want to know how much of the computer expenses company had between the months of January and June. To recalculate this, you need to put the cursor into the cell H2. Let's enter formula differently. We will just type it manually. To do that, we need to type the equal sign, and then we can type the sum formula, and you see what Excel online does automatically. It shows you all available formulas that match the criteria of sum, but as soon as I enter the parentheses to start typing values, I can either drag the cursor here, which will um, enter the range here, and our range will be from B2 through G2, and I just need to close the parentheses and hit enter, and uh, Excel will calculate the value. If you see pound signs in the cell, it doesn't represent the error, it just means that the value is too big for Excel to show. To fix it, you can either manually expand the column, or you can just double click on this area in between two columns. In my case, it's between columns H and I, and uh, Excel will automatically adjust the width of the column. I showed you a way to replicate the formula through this extension box. Another way to replicate the formula would be through the use of copy and paste functions. To do that, you just need to use uh, Control C on the keyboard. I just typed Control C. Another way to do it would be click copy right here in the ribbon. And then you can just select the new range. And then you can just click paste here in the ribbon. And Excel will recalculate because it inserted this formula and it will recalculate all the values for different expense categories in column H. The only other thing we would need to add is the title for this column. So we can just type total and similar to the way how we formatted other columns, uh, we can format column H. We just need to select the column and click uh, center formatting. To print Excel online document, you need to click file and then print. And when you click print button, it allows you to select from multiple different options. You can print active sheet, you can print entire workbook, or you can just print the current selection. And you can choose from different uh, page orientation options for portrait and landscape. I'm going to choose active sheet. I'm going to choose landscape option. And I'm going to click uh, continue. And uh, what Excel will let me do, it will let me print right from the browser and I can print into the PDF file, and once data is printed, I'll be able to use it in my PDF file. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.